Okay, this is chapter four. It's a pretty big chapter. There are eight sections to it. So let's start with factors and monomials. We're gonna be learning about divisibility rules when we work through this and how, um, how to identify a monomial. So think about the divisibility rules for two, three, five, six, or 10. First, um, the divisibility rule for two is as long as it ends in an even number, two goes into it. Divisibility rule for um, three is if I added up four plus three plus five, if that's a number that three can go into, then three can go into this whole number. Divisibility rule for five is if it ends in a five or a zero, five goes into it. Divisibility rule for six is if you said yes to two and yes to three, then it's automatically yes to six. And the rule for 10 is if it ends in a zero. So let's look at this number, 435. Is it divisible by two? Nope, because the ones digit is not divisible by two. So remember, this digit right here would have to be divisible. Is it by three? Yes, because if you add the digits together, you get a sum of 12, and three goes into 12, so three goes into this whole number. Is it divisible by five? Yes, because the ones digit is a five. Six will be no, because you said no to two. And in order for it to be divisible by six, it has to be a yes to two and three. And 10, no, because the ones digit would have to be a zero. So those are the divisibility rules. Why do we need to know these rules? It makes mental math easier and able to do factoring easier. So do it again, 786, what would you say for two? Yes. What would you say for three? You would have to add seven plus eight plus six. You would say no for five. Six would be, if you said yes to two and three, then it's gonna be yes to six. And 10 would be no because it didn't end in a zero. So it's divisible by two, three, and six. Sonia is running for student council president. She wants to give out campaign flyers with a pen to each student in the school. She can buy, vote for Sonia, pens in packages of five, six, or 10. If there are 306 students in the school and she doesn't want any pens left over, so basically I wanna know which of these numbers go into this number evenly with no remainders. Well, we can definitely say no to five and 10 because it doesn't end in a five or a zero. So obviously it must be six. It's the same kind of problem, but the only looking at 72 and again, six. List all the factors of 64. Um, so when you're listing the factors, you're gonna just list out what numbers multiply to make 64. So, 1 and 64, 2 and 32, 3 can't go into it because 6 plus 4 is 10, uh, 4 is 4 and 16, uh, 5 doesn't go into it, 6 doesn't go into it because you didn't say yes to 3, 7 is a no, there's no rule we use for 7, and 8 is a yes. So if you listed out the factors, I kind of want you to put it into a set and I want you to say, well, you got one in 64. This is like the rainbow method it's called. And then two times 32. And then four times 16. And the last one is eight works. That's how I want you to set it up for your homework. So you can see this is the rainbow. One in 64, two in 32, four times 16. And then you only have to list eight once. That's all you do. So then list the factors for 96, there they are. Determine whether it's a monomial. All right, first of all, let's focus on the prefix mono. It means one. If you recall back in, oh, I don't even know, chapter three, we had to identify um, terms of a figure um, and we also did the distributive property. So do you recognize that this is the distributive property? Because it says four times the quantity of n plus three. So remember, for every one thing inside you make two lines, you distribute the four to the n and the four to the three. 
So it becomes 4n plus 12, like this. Monomial means one term. Remember, a term is what is separated by addition sign. So this is a term and this is a term. So this is not a monomial, it's a binomial because there are two terms. I can't put these together. If you recall from chapter three, we can only put like terms together and these are not alike. So we can't stack them and combine them. So this is a no, it is not a monomial, it's a binomial. There's two terms. Always simplify before you identify. Is X divided by three a monomial? Yeah, it's a monomial. It's only one term. The coefficient is one third X. See that remember there's always a one by the X. So the coefficient, remember, is the numerical value next to the variable. So if I pull this away, it becomes one third X. And remember, um, if there's no symbol, it means multiplication. To be a term, it has to be separated by an addition sign. If it was one third plus X, the answer would be no. But it's one third times X, so this one is yes. It is a monomial one term. This would be a yes because there's only one term. There's no addition sign. This would be a no because once you distribute this, you have two terms and therefore it's a no. That's it. It's pretty easy when you do monomials. Remember, a monomial can only be one term. That's it.